Okay, so some of the most common math problems that you will face in basic math, algebra, and even geometry have to deal with this uh, concept that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now let's take a look at this problem right here. We have x plus 1 over 3, and this is equal to 1 over 5. But really we have one fraction, and this is equal to another fraction. So when you have a fraction that's equal to another fraction, what is this concept called in math? Now, if you don't know this, you definitely want to pay attention because this is a big, big, big topic, again, in basic math, algebra, and geometry. And I'll give you a hint. It starts with a P. All right, so if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. But uh, I'm going to be talking about this uh, concept in this video, but I'm also going to be highlighting a very common error that people make when they're trying to solve a problem like this. So if you think you know the answer to this particular uh, algebra equation, we have x plus 1 over 3. This is equal to 1 fifth. If you think you know the answer to this, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm going to solve this later on in the video. But uh, before we do this, let's talk about what one fraction is equal to another fraction. What is this called and why is this important? All right, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So in mathematics, when you have two equal fractions, uh, this is what we call a proportion. Okay, let's just kind of do something here real quick. If I have uh, the fraction one half, let's just think of another fraction that's equal to one half. How about like five over 10? Obviously there's an uh, infinite number of fractions that are equal to one half, uh, three over six, et cetera, et cetera. But here's the main idea. When you have two equal fractions, this is what we call a proportion in mathematics, okay, two equal fractions, two equal rates or ratios, that's just a technical uh, technical term for a special type of fractions. But here's what I want you to know. When you have two equal fractions, the cross products are equal, okay? So in other words here, one times 10 is equal to two times five, all right? So 10 is equal to 10. So again, when you have a valid proportion, i.e. two, um, equivalent fractions, the cross products will always be equal, right? That's a huge, very, very important concept in mathematics. So when we look at this uh, problem, although this is uh, there's a variable here, this is one fraction and it's equal to another fraction, right? So you should be thinking, oh, this is a proportion and maybe the cross products are equal. In fact, they are. Okay, so this is the uh, main strategy we're going to take to solve this equation. But uh, here, this x plus 1, we're going to kind of simplify this down into this problem right here. We'll get back to this original problem. But let's take a look at x over 3 is equal to 1 fifth, right? Not the x plus 1. We'll look at, the, again, a simpler version of this. So when you're looking at this, you're like, okay, well, uh, this is one fraction. It's equal to another fraction, so the cross products are true, or the product, cross products are equal, okay? So we can write this as x times 5 is, of course, 5x, okay? And that's going to be equal to 3 times 1, which, of course, is 3. So 5x is equal to 3. So this proportion uh, will turn into this equation. And to solve for x, all I have to do is divide both sides of, the uh, both sides of this equation by 5. So x is equal to 3 fifths. Okay, so hopefully uh, you understood this. You're like, yeah, yeah, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I already know this. Hopefully you're not going to waste my time with this video. Uh, you know, listen, I'm not going to waste your time because this problem was pretty easy, right? We had x over 3 is equal to 1 half. Here is the kind of situation where students are going to make an error. Okay, many, many students... Um, make this error and eventually uh, some uh, you know for those that are paying attention will stop uh, and others uh, they will continue to get these type of problems wrong all right so here i have one fraction equal to another fraction so i'm like okay no problem i'm going to use the cross product this times this is going to be equal to this times this so what does a student do? They're like, okay, five times x plus one. So here I have five times x plus one is equal to three times one. All right, so this seems pretty okay, right? Some of you are like, hey, well, you know, you just taught me that we could do this. What's the problem? Well, I'll get to this in just one second. All right, so let's continue on. So five times x plus one. 
So a student would go, okay, well, five times X, that's five X plus one is equal to three, right? Does this seem okay? Well, obviously this is wrong. I'll tell you why here in a second. So this is what a lot of students would do. They're like, okay, five X plus one, all right, that's equal to three. So now I'm gonna subtract one from both sides of the equation. I get five X is equal to two. Now I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by five. So I get X is equal to two fifths. So this seems pretty reasonable, right? Uh, and a lot of you are like, well, I don't see the problem there, Mr. YouTube math man. Well, I'm gonna tell you what the problem is in just one second, but this is wrong, okay? This is wrong. Let's take a look at what is right, okay? So same situation here. We're gonna be uh, looking at the proportion, right? We have one fraction equal to another fraction. This is another, another way to describe this type of equation is what we call a rational equation. But anytime you have uh, uh, equations that involve fractions, you got one fraction equal to another fraction, be thinking in terms of the cross product. So this times this is gonna be equal to this times this. So what was the problem in the, uh, the uh, that previous work I just showed you? Well, we're gonna go five times X plus one, and that's gonna be equal to three times one. So three times one, that's pretty easy. There's three times one, but here is the main mistake. When you go five times X plus one, this is a sum or diff uh, a sum in mathematics. Now let me clear this out because if you don't do this little thing that I have, you're going to make an error, all right? So anytime you have a sum or difference, uh, when you have things being added up or, or uh, subtracted, a lot of math teachers and a lot of proms are not going to be um, friendly to you. They're not going <laughs> to say, they're not going to put in the parentheses like that. Now, sometimes they do, and they're being a little bit extra nice, but oftentimes you'll see the problem just like this, but you have to put in uh, the parentheses. Okay. So this is five times uh, the group X plus one. Now, why does that make a difference? Well, I'll show you right uh, why right now. Okay, so instead of 5x plus 1 like we had in the previous work, we have to use the distributive property or 5x, that's 5x, times this 5 times that 1, okay, which is 5, not 1. See, previously, we didn't use the distributive property. We just went 5 times x, which is 5x plus 1. Very, very common mistake because, you know, uh, oftentimes you're, um, the problems that you're given do not have parentheses or grouping symbols around them. You'll have to put them in uh, or you'll make this error, okay, or mentally put them in. But I'm gonna, uh, I'll give you a little um, piece of advice here in just one second. But now that you have this group, that's gonna be five X plus five times one is five is equal to three. Everything changes, right? So now I'm gonna subtract five from both sides of the equation. I get five X is equal to negative two. Then I'll divide both sides of the equation by five. So X is equal to negative two fifths. Okay, so let's talk about sums and differences. Now, before we continue on, please consider hitting that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that bell notification as well. Now, the problem that we're doing involves uh, kind of first uh, year algebra. So if you need help with pre-algebra, Algebra 1 courses like that, check out the, those courses of mine. You can find the links of those in the description of this video. So again, that would be pre-algebra, algebra one, or maybe even my math skills rebuilder course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to the problem. So in algebra, okay, especially when you're working with any kind of uh, fractional things, if you have lot, uh, things like y minus seven um, uh, over x plus nine, any kind of expression like this, right? Could be a squared minus a plus nine over uh, a minus six. Just get in the habit when you have differences, and these are sums, put grouping symbols around them, okay? Parentheses, all right? Now, oftentimes, a lot of uh, the, the work that you'll be doing, the problems you'll be given, have these grouping symbols around them, but oftentimes they're not there as well, okay? You'll have things like, um, you know, like X minus uh, nine over three is equal to one half. Okay. And, and if you don't know any better, you're like, oh, this is a proportion. I'm going to have to go two times X minus nine. All right. These parentheses are not in there. And that just makes a world of difference 
uh, for a lot of students, okay? So a little detail like this, just putting in these parentheses, is not mathematically, you don't break anything by adding in grouping symbols. So you're like, well, if I put these in, do I change a prompt? No, you do not. It's just kind of an extra uh, way to kind of, you know, remind you that we are talking about groups here, okay? And that's a really huge, um, you know, kind of uh, way to avoid making this very, very common error. Now, how would I know that this is a common mistake? Is this going to be in textbooks? Well, a lot of textbooks uh, don't emphasize this, and some teachers uh, don't maybe emphasize this as enough. You know, I'm sure they'll teach you this, okay? But here's the deal. When you've been teaching math as long as I have, you know, in terms of decades, and you've graded, you know, hundreds of thousands of homework, quizzes, you know, I don't know how, how many have actually graded, but you know, you, you really see the trends through the years, through the decades. And I'm pretty sure I was making this mistake way back in the good old 1980s when I was uh, uh, in you know high school as well. It's just one of these type of things that students tend to make uh, mistakes on. So a lot of uh, math, being successful in math, is avoiding common errors. Okay, when I make my YouTube videos, I really try to share with you and highlight these common errors, and this is one of them. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in algebra, check out these courses right here. So pre-algebra is uh, for those of you that are studying basic algebra. But uh, if you are further along in mathematics, then you may wanna check out my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. Now, my Math Skills Rebuilder course is a review course. I cover basic math algebra and geometry in this course. I'm going to leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.